Item number SCP-292, Object Class, Euclid, Special Containment Procedures. SCP-292 is to be kept at Site-72 in a guarded room in a locked padded container set up to avoid movement of or damage to SCP-292. Access to SCP-292 is prohibited without Level 3 authorization. Site personnel must report all incidents of deja vu or related symptoms to site administration. Description SCP-292 is a 60-second brass hourglass, 10 centimeters tall. When all sand is at the bottom and SCP-292 is flipped over, only two outcomes have ever been observed. Either the sand runs out normally after one minute, or SCP-292 is knocked over on its side. If SCP-292 is knocked over, our numbness properties do not again manifest until all the sand in SCP-292 is in one bulb. At no time has SCP-292 ever been observed to be flipped over a second time within 60 seconds, except when knocked over as above. Any time SCP-292 is upright and all its sand is its bottom bulb, and the subject attempts to flip SCP-292 over with the intent to flip it again before all its sand runs out, the subject and people nearby suddenly experience deja vu. The intensity of deja vu is inversely proportional to a person's distance from SCP-292. The subject is often momentarily stunned by the experience. Persons experiencing deja vu from the same event often describe similar recalled experiences. It is believed that when SCP-292 is flipped over, a process is started in which if SCP-292 is flipped again before its sands run out, time flows in reverse to a point a couple of seconds before SCP-292 was initially flipped. Note, this effect is similar in nature to that of SCP-1876, albeit with different psychological effects on those experiencing the phenomenon. Time then flows forward again as if SCP-292 would never flip. Deja vu would thus be a side effect of this process. Prolonged exposure to SCP-292 can cause nausea, migraines, vertigo, hallucinations, seizures, and symptoms consistent with temporal disjunction, somatic, psychological, or both. Note, more information can be found in document 29248K, Theoretical and Observed Symptoms of Temporally Related Afflictions. Addendum 1, Experiment, Experiment 29231. Procedure, Subject, 03101 was instructed to flip SCP-292 over and then shoot subject 03102 to death and flip SCP-292 back over before it runs out. The subject 1 reached for SCP-292. Both subjects as well as other personnel in the area reported feeling deja vu. Subject 1 exhibited elevated levels of adrenaline while Subject 2 exhibited pronounced apprehension in the presence of Subject 1. Addendum 2, Experiment 29246, Procedure. Subject 04601 was instructed to flip SCP-292 over, wait 30 seconds and flip SCP-292 back over. When data vu was experienced, Subject 04602 was instructed to do the same thing when deja vu was experienced a second time. Subject 04603 was instructed to do the same thing. Result, a subject one week for SCP-292, all subjects experienced deja vu as expected. Subject two hesitated and was instructed to flip SCP-292 while reaching for SCP-292. Subject two fell to his knees. Subject one doubled over and subject three staggered. Subject three was instructed to flip SCP-292 and as he reached for SCP-292, all subjects appeared to exhibit temporal shock. Note, a bit. For 10 to 15 seconds, 
before falling unconscious. Temporal symptoms subsided within 5-7 to seven days, while visual and audio hallucinations persisted for several months more. Addendum 3 Incident 292-4 When preparing for Experiment 292-75, Dr. Beep suddenly clutched SCP-292 to his chest and reported that he had experienced deja vu. Dr. Beep said that he felt like he was about to drop SCP-292, and if he did, something bad would happen. Dr. Beep has hypothesized that Dr. Beep had indeed dropped SCP-292, but instead of breaking, SCP-292 reversed the flow of time until a moment before it was dropped. If SCP-292 does in fact possess such a self-preservation system, the potential consequences they to expunged. Reclassification to Euclid approved. Beep, Tony Beep, until more information on SCP-292's properties can be gathered and analyzed.